Greetings ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Galactic Tales, where I take stories from across the internet and read them for your entertainment. This particular story is called, Please, Don't Drag Humans Into This Conflict, by you, going underscore over underscore that underscore cliff. The lightless room is engulfed by an eerie quietness, interrupted only by the sporadic coughing of one particular cadet seated in one of the back rows. The lights, already turned off from the rejected turn-on, flicker back to life as the head instructor walks in. Good morning, class. I have bad news and, uh, more bad news. Everyone's worries had just been confirmed, the rumors were real. Reports confirmed that yesterday, in the proximity of the disputed SX-9318 star system, the Korean destroyer KFS Rika D 9063 unprovokedly attacked and sank our cargo ship Steel Whale. The deafening silence rings louder than a thousand cannons. Everyone knows that the attack didn't come out of nowhere, as propaganda tries to argue. These border skirmishes have been going on for months, and the fact that the authorities refuse to disclose the exact coordinates of the incident suggests, if not confirms, that the Italian ship was indeed sailing in Korean space. Now, as all politicians do their very best to escalate these easily solvable issues into a war, Diplomats are sweating their asses off not to ignite a new conflict. Meanwhile, the military must sacrifice our hearts and souls to protect them. The cadets are uneasy, to say the least. They are just a couple of weeks from graduation and know that if anyone were to fight in the upcoming hostilities, it would be them, new, fresh meat for the grinder, as they'd like to joke about. But they are laughing no more. As much as I have faith in you and in my training, I want to give you some actual advice from someone who actually has some experience in these sorts of things, in the hope that you will never have to use my teachings. As everyone grabs something to take notes on, the instructor reaches out for the projector's remote and starts his brief presentation. The first slide is just a simple, know your enemy. The session was initially intended as a farewell and good luck speech where I would have shared some of my tips and tricks on how to survive an encounter with a pissed off higher ranking officer. Given current events, I quickly prepared something else for you. It's a bit barren in content, but I will make up for it by boring you to death with my speech, says the old Italian, lightening the mood in the room. But given the circumstances, I will just tell you what I think is best for you, the truth. You can put down your pens and crayons, there will be nothing to memorize, just things to keep in your heart. A bit confused, eventually, everyone puts aside what was on their desk. As you can see, the title of my presentation is, Know Your Enemy. I'm sure you passed with flying colors your intel gathering and pattern analysis courses. You might be thinking that you know your enemies, the Calthians, Meridian, off rights, right? Some uncertain murmurs and quiet replies came from the sea of heads lost in the dark. You would be right, that was a trick question. Military history and psychology. But as stated by the title, those are not your true enemies. Their allies are, well, they could be, to be precise. Although the listeners are by all means greenhorns, everyone would understand the basic functions of a defensive pact and the consequences of declaring war on a member of one. The coalition of the first arm is a strong regional power with an experienced fighting force, having fought and won a war against the Union. As of now, our intelligence confirms that no member of the coalition has any intention of stepping in and providing actual support to the Calthians as they deem this conflict outside their greater interests. Also, because there is an unwritten agreement between the coalition and our own alliance to avoid a regional war on this side of the Milky Way. Border wars and star skirmishes, as they are called, are somewhat regular events that happen once every few years between certain neighboring powers over disputed claims. It's not a full-on war and is usually resolved in a few months with limited and contained damages. Worry not, everything suggests that these skirmishes will be nothing out of the ordinary. So, a couple of blows here and there until one of the two parties grows tired and claims their objectives have been achieved. And that would be all of it, if not for a little new variable in the equation. A variable ever so little, but certainly not insignificant. Among the audience, whispers and suggestions try to guess what that would be. As theories and ideas are shared and commented on, the projector transitions to the next slide, Spectres. You know how the saying goes that we, the Italians, have a haunting past, and the ghost of violence always haunts us. 
No matter how hard we try to hide from others, everyone knows what our ancestors were capable of doing and did. And that's the key word, were. Silence comes back to reign in the room. We are no longer what we were. We grew up. We changed. We are nowhere comparable to what we were in the past. The ghost of violence is just that, a spectre. It does not exist. We, as a society and a species, are no longer capable, both physically and mentally, of performing such acts that defined our past. In no way, shape, or form could we replicate the exterminations of the fifth era, take on the Zalak like we did in the seventh era, or install a regional hegemony based on strength and fear as we did in the eighth era. We have to accept the fact that our past is what it is. The vast and widespread mature mindset was the shifting attitude that brought the Italians to what is considered the new golden era, a period of stability and cooperation between species that allowed for significant growth in commerce and quality of life. But I wouldn't make this speech without a reason. So let me present to you the real threat that looms over us, says the instructor in a very theatrical manner. Gasps and stupor fill the room as the contents of the next slide are revealed, humans. These are the real wild gods. From the dark, a silhouette can be seen raising its hand. After being allowed to speak, the voice asks for an explanation as to why humans, of all things, are considered a greater threat than the Calthians, known for their physical strength and elite warrior culture. As you all well know, humans are a relatively recent addition to the Coalition's roster. They are more widely known for their origin as death worlders and their apparent cheerful and carefree behavior. But as you might have guessed by my phrasing, that is only a facade. The same voice that asked the previous question, now filled with confusion, states that they have met several humans, and even the most unfriendly ones were welcoming by galactic standards, and they didn't appear all that threatening. And I won't bore you with the specifics, also because it's highly classified documentation, but we think humans have the strongest military in the Orion arm, possibly the single most powerful military force in the known galaxy. The cadets cannot hide their excitement or terror as the room erupts in uproar. That aside, we have reason to believe they are not even remotely interested in interfering in our skirmish, so you can sleep well knowing that. One of the young officers asks why humans have been mentioned if they do not pose an actual threat. And with this, let me move on to the next slide. The words shown by the presentation this time are, shadow. Given the context, do you know the difference between a ghost and a shadow? Many try to guess the right answer, but none succeed. Spectres, as said before, are not real. Shadows are. Shadows follow us everywhere. Shadows cannot be faded away, not even by the strongest ray from the strongest star. Quite the opposite, the brightest light casts the darkest shadow. Shadows run just as fast, if not faster than us, and despite our best efforts, we can never part ways with them. Humans, humans have the scariest, deepest shadows. A creepy silence takes over the room as all voices finally quiet down. The instructor continues his last lecture. While we are incapable of replicating our past, humans' potential for destruction grows hand in hand with their technological innovation. And that is why their shadow grows darker and wider every hour, every minute. It's no longer just a pool of darkness, it is an abyss filled with numerous unspeakable horrors of their past and the infinity of unimaginable acts possible in the future. The shadow of war has and will always accompany humans until the heat death of the universe. Thankfully, the Terrans know of the miasma of death that follows them like a wicked puppy, and they try their best to train it and make it behave. Trust me, they do everything possible to keep it under control. But the problem is that we don't know what could cause the owner to let go of the leash holding their hound back. We don't know what would be crossing the line with humans because, truthfully, they themselves do not know what that would be. When on the front lines, as you sit in your comfy chair giving out commands, remember these words, remember these few minutes of your life, and remember them well. If you see a Terran insignia, do not attack it, do not approach it. If possible, order all your forces to stand down or even retreat. If you see the blue globe with white continental lines on the side of a ship, be it a random cargo hauler or even a goddamn insignificant mining drone from whom you wish to contact immediately and help them out in any way possible, halt an entire battle group if necessary. It could even be a setup to drag humans into the conflict, for all you might know, 
but you will have to try your very best not to give them a reason to unleash the war monster that hides in their shadow, a beast so scary they have spent all their history trying to tame it, writing laws, treaties, and articles trying to regulate the exercise of violence. They try to convince us that they are friendly and open to cooperation, and this is true until you cross the line, a line that keeps moving back and forth, a line that cannot be understood. In conclusion, it is very simple. The revised Geneva Convention dictates how to conduct war between humans. It's a very well thought out treaty that limits the use of much of humanity's weaponry. The only problem is that we, as you might have guessed, are not humans. So, by the gods, don't give them a reason to use us as target practice for their untested arsenal.